I'm Rick Chazelle, the uh, leading past president of the American College of Cardiology, and I want to welcome you to this session and appreciate your attendance. I'm joined by uh, fellow moderators, our doctors uh, Tang, Wilson, and Lee. Uh, and we're going to talk principally this afternoon about systems of skin care. Uh, I'm going to actually start with a talk that is a bit upstream of systems of skin care and talk to you a little bit about use of chest pain centers for evaluation of patients uh, at low and intermediate risk. Uh, we'll talk about a brief review of guideline directed care, a uh, review of some of the data and opinions that may influence how to manage this large volume of patients that we see with chest pain. And then I'll give you an example of what we've done with our chest pain centers uh, in uh, my home institution in Florida. Much of the guideline uh, uh, evidence comes out of STEMI or NSTEMI guidelines rather than chest pain guidelines. And uh, much of what we've done in our chest pain centers is based on this 2014 ACC AHA guideline for the management of uh, non STEMI uh, infarction. And it focuses, as you might imagine, on early electrocardiography with repeat electrocardiography and the measurement of component initially and then with serial component. I would also point out, however, that there's a discussion about utilizing uh, risk scores or risk stratification to try and help assess these patients. And we'll talk a little bit about how that can be utilized from a practical standpoint. I'd like to also highlight this point uh, uh, in red, and that is uh, the guidelines suggest that for those patients at relatively low risk, who rule out for acute coronary syndrome, evaluation could be done as an uh, inpatient. It also could be delayed in the outpatient setting, but if delayed, it's recommended that it be done within 72 hours. And that you'll see incorporated into our processes here. Now, 2015, a group led by the American College of Radiology talked about appropriate utilization of imaging for patients in the emergency department over chest pain. And I will tell you that in the United States, this is an oft, often debated uh, protocol. And I'll note, you note that coronary CTA was utilized highly in this particular protocol. And this line that you see with low risk scores and initial intermediate to low risk, that it was rarely appropriate to do most of the uh, imaging studies, The coronary CTA was felt to be appropriate. Now, for those that had a serial uh, study, serial EKGs and trombones that were negative, there was appropriate use of exercise, <coughs> exercise EKG, stress echocardiography, stress rest, CMR, or maybe more coronary CTA, but rarely use of coronary angiography. Again, a fairly broad uh, protocol that, has, uh, that is still fairly hotly debated in the United States. If one looks at some of the published data over the past decade related to this, and especially with a focus on the use of coronary CTA, this dates back to a paper in 2008 from the Accuracy Trial, <coughs> which randomized up just over 200 patients to standard of care versus coronary CTA and demonstrated for the first time at, at that point that evaluation of these patients could be done with high sensitivity and specificity for detecting of uh, significant stenosis. And three years later, 2011, the CT staff study, randomizing in this case a little over 300 patients, said that in patients at low risk for chest pain, that the use of CT coronary angiography upstream very early in the evaluation of patients could result in shorter evaluation times to diagnosis and can, could actually reduce costs. Now, in 2012, uh, Dr. Udo Hoffman and colleagues published the uh, uh, results of Romicat, and notice here that the number of patients keeps increasing in these studies, now up to almost 1,300 patients uh, who are evaluated for randomization to either coronary CTA or standard evaluation. And what they found is that the mean length of stay for those patients who had coronary CTA was low, at just under nine hours, 
has to put a preventative standard of care within about 27 hours. So again, a demonstration of some improvement of care at least based on how long it took to make the diagnosis. Now Douglas uh, from Duke and colleagues uh, uh, published uh, a, what we now consider to be something of a landmark study in 2015 in the New England Journal, the PROMISE study. And in this case, this is a, the largest trial to date that randomized this number. This was 10,000 patients randomized in a one-to-one -one fashion to either an anatomic structure with CTA that had to be at least 64 slices or greater, or a functional strategy with exercise, EKG, or pharmacologic stress testing. And if one looks at the primary endpoints of death, and my unstable engine or major complications, there really was no significant difference between either strategy. And what they did find is that if the patient subsequently went to basic coronary angiography, as you might expect, if they had had a coronary CTA, they were less likely to have obstructive coronary disease. But overall, the results of the primary outcome in the promised trial did not show any significant difference. It validated the fact that this was a viable alternative, but not necessarily a superior alternative to standard uh, testing with functional evaluation. Now, a similar group, again led by Pam Douglas, subsequently published the, the results of the platform trial. The platform trial looked at the use of coronary CTA with integration of functional flow reserve in a non-invasive fashion for looking at these patients who presented with chest pain. This number, not quite so large, a little under 600 patients, random divided up between those that had a planned non-invasive test or those who had a planned invasive coronary angiogram. So once they broke those groups out, they were randomized either to the test for which they were planned, either the standard non-invasive test or the standard invasive coronary angiogram, or an FFR guided coronary CTA to try and look at the results from that evaluation. And in summary, what they found is that in patients who had a CT with FFR, who had a planned invasive uh, 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 catheterization, there, as you might imagine, was a reduction in the findings of non-obstructive coronary disease, a dramatic reduction from 73% to 12%, and in the use of FFRCT, providing information <laughs> if the patient required revascularization. There was no difference in the outcomes of these patient cohorts. Now, the Scott Hart trial, uh, published in Jack in 2016, did show a difference. Uh, it's very important. These patients were randomized to standard of care or coronary CTA for evaluation of chest pain. The outcomes in terms of uh, in terms of myocardial infarction and death were not dissimilar in the early findings. But if you followed them out for five years or for three years, one saw a significant 50% reduction in the death rate between those who had undergone coronary CTA and standard of care. And this is despite a similar angiographic uh, incidence in both groups. Now, while not absolutely proven, most believe that this was due to a difference in therapy that was initiated about 50 days in average after the initial event. The upper line here shows the difference in the percentage of patients, these up here with coronary CTA, who had initiation of platelet therapy, and in the lower graph, those who had initiation of statin therapy. These in large part were patients who presented with chest pain, ruled out for acute coronary syndrome, had a coronary CTA that showed non-occlusive disease, but atherosclerotic plaque, prompting the physicians to initiate therapy that then presumably was the cause for a reduction in a three-year risk of about 50%. So in this case, an anatomical structure uh, evaluation rather than a functional evaluation that resulted in a reduction in risk downstream. To shift gears for a moment, the, the group from Mayo Clinic at ACC 16 had a novel approach, and they actually looked at patients and gave them a pictogram once they initially ruled out and, and demonstrated to them that at 45 days, the data showed that only about 1% of patients who present at low risk are likely to have an event. 
So armed with this information, they queried the patients and they gave them alternatives. The alternatives involved uh, uh, going ahead and having a functional or an anatomic structure right away, being discharged and being evaluated by, their, by a physician within 24 to 72 hours, uh, seeing it kind of be uh, 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 an immediate test uh, or an appointment with their own primary care physician or having the ER doctor decide. So, again, this is what we call in the, state, the United States shared decision making, letting the patient know about the data and decide how they wish to proceed. Well, the end result is that a significant number of patients decided to do nothing. And when one looked at the safety, the revascularization rate, the MI rate, the death rate, the base rate in 30 days was no different, regardless of what, uh, whether or not one allowed the patient to choose the strategy. And the resource use was substantially lower, as you might imagine. Less were admitted, less stress testing, and less uh, and a similar rate of coronary CTA within 30 days. So this was a demonstration that the event rate is low enough that there really is some flexibility in how to proceed. And this and other studies prompted Dr. Ha uh, Dr. Amsterdam, one of the lead authors of, of the STEMI, uh, STEMI guidelines, to raise the possibility that perhaps we don't need to hurt these patients up uh, in every case uh, uh, as we've done in the past. Now, the emergence of high sensitivity to chronic changes the, uh, uh, the uh, background a bit as well. In the United States, high sensitivity troponin was only released by the FDA in April. In Europe and in Asia, there's a lot more experience than we have. But as many of you in the audience know, the studies, particularly in that trial, showed that at one hour, there's a negative predicted value of 99.7%. And if you take it out to three hours, that goes up to 100%. Uh, we, we do know from data that was released in chat uh, just this past year, that if one uh, uh, utilizes high sensitivity to common and it's negative, if the patient is directly discharged, the event rate with uh, high sensitivity to common is actually lower uh, than those who uh, had conventional workup. If the patient uh, is admitted first and later discharged, presumably the resident and determine or elevate high sensitivity to common, the event rate is higher. So again, demonstrating that the high sensitivity to common highly predicted on the dead rates as illustrated in this chart. And this, this and other data, actually data even previous to this, prompted the European Society to, to suggest that a zero three hour high sensitivity component workup is, is, uh, is uh, utilitarian. So patients presenting with an initial high sensitivity component that's negative, if the pain has been for over six hours, and they're pain-free and have a low risk score, those patients can be discharged during the immediate testing. If the pain is less than six hours, the troponin is repeated at three hours and then into the protocol. So this is a zero three-hour workup, uh, workup protocol for negative. If it's elevated, one looks for a change in troponin, uh, and if there's a change, uh, we'll to see two invasive workup. So our options then are either watchful waiting, some sort of functional testing uh, uh, during admission or as an outpatient or an ordinary CTA. So I'll briefly show you what we've done uh, for the past five years and what we've seen and, and how it's been uh, uh, the results that we've got. We use a protocol-driven approach with dedicated units uh, that are staffed with advanced practice providers, PAs, physician assistants, and nurse practitioners with dedicated nurses and techs. We have the uh, advanced providers working from a modified appropriate use criteria with a cardiologist on call. And so there's a protocol from which one can deviate with the provision of the cardiologist. Outpatient tests, if done, are scheduled within 72 hours. We personally use the heart score. I don't think the, the choice of the scoring system is essential, but the heart score was actually developed for chest pain rather than acute coronary syndrome, but we utilize risk stratification numerically to decide who could be in our protocols. This is a busy slide, but basically to show you that high-risk patients are admitted for workup. Those are moderate to low risk. In our particular protocol, currently, at standard troponin at zero degree in six hours, if it's negative, the workup is either done as an outpatient or an inpatient. Our protocol for workup, 
is again based on, on a modification of the appropriate use criteria. The patient is low risk, is able to walk on a treadmill, and has an interpretable EKG. The most cost effective strategy is a regular stress test. For others that are at higher risk or have an uninterpretable EKG, we use nuclear stress testing or, in many cases, stress testing. In our particular protocol, we, we reserve coronary CTA for repeat admissions within the past 12 months, and those go directly to the scanner regardless of, uh, regardless of the uh, uh, of serial studies. So the key elements for us are low intermediate risk for regular troponins, and these are standard troponins, not high sensitivity, and zero to three to six hours with no dynamic EKG changes. Functional testing is done within 72 hours, and the test is done for a standard protocol. Our length of stay dropped uh, uh, initially when we were at about 37 hours, uh, down to about 17 hours on those in our chest pain centers. Interestingly enough, in our system, even those that are not randomized to the uh, chest pain center or not in the chest pain center have, re have uh, experienced a reduction in length of stay, principally because of the over of guidelines um, uh, to other units. But this does show you, this is one of my four hospitals, it shows you that there's a difference in the variation of care with a clumping of the length of stay, uh, 20 hours or less, uh, over here, and those that are in our chest pain center protocols, and those that are, in, that are getting standard of care, have a high degree of irritability and a longer length of stay. Our outcomes show that when we calculate the day, bed that is saved, and this is data that was updated about six months ago, we're waiting for our latest update. We saved about 25,000 bed days over uh, the past, but this is over about four and a half years. So uh, the amount of money saved for our system is, uh, is pretty high. We've had one death. We track uh, with, both, with callbacks uh, the uh, uh, outcomes from that one death, and that was a non-cardiac uh, non death. Uh, I'm sorry, this, uh, this is the uh, this is readmission rate, about 1%, and the depth you see down here at, the set, at point of the three. So we believe that uh, making these types of processes that requires uh, following the science, utilizing guidelines, and appropriate use, but you have to have one little by hand or, or it won't work. We've used dedicated units. Facilitation by advanced care providers, at least in our system, is extremely important. Our physicians are often busy doing other things, but our advanced providers see these patients usually within minutes uh, of their arrival in the emergency department and can get things moving rapidly. We have to have a physician champion buy-in from the hospital system because there are some up front costs uh, and buy-in from the physicians that there really is an improvement in quality of patients. And you've got to follow the science. We're currently looking at our, at our protocols and uh, with the early adoption soon of high sensitivity troponin and earlier use of coronary CTN. But what you can uh, experience, and what we've experienced, is a reduction in variation, a reduction in cost, uh, as you see there. Our patient satisfaction uh, uh, numbers have, uh, have skyrocketed, and there is no reduction in other quality in the So thank you very much for your attention.